Hey everyone, I just downloaded the update for Addictive Drums 2. It's uh, version 2.5. Uh, kind of a surprise that it came out. Uh, this is actually really old software. Um, I actually got it a couple years back because just the sounds in it, I mean the actual drum kit sounds are very uh, realistic. And uh, I just, I really like how everything sounds. It kind of fits with what I'm trying to do with my music as well too. Um, but the cool part is they actually updated this to version uh, 2.5 and uh, it's all the, you know, the, this, the, the, how it was set up from before, it's still the same thing. They just added a couple extra features, but they made it look nicer and the extra features are, are pretty nice where you can, there's a compressor, a, a gate, and they also did a couple little things here and there. Uh, that just kind of improved the whole uh, workflow and, and um how you can create sounds. Uh, so let me go over just some of the basics here. Like I said, I just got it, so I don't know 100% of everything, but at least I can give everyone an overview about how I um, do drums and uh, record drums that are virtual. Uh, so this is all on the computer. And uh, what I do is I have a keyboard that will trigger the drum sounds, or there's also within this, there's a, a beat section. So you can go into here and you can actually select pre-made MIDI uh, tracks that you can take and you can actually take these and drag these into your DAW choice uh, that you have. And uh, yeah, I typically use this with reason and uh, logic. But uh, yeah, let me go over some of this real quick here. So there's the basic explore part here, which you can listen to. By doing this, you can also adjust certain basic settings in the room. Overheads. Hi-hat. Cut it back. Snare. Kick. And in here, uh, you can go through and uh, I have a bunch of other kits that I've uh, purchased from before. And you can change your kit and alter the sounds. Okay, and then uh, like I said these are just different uh, presets that they have. Um, you can actually go through and you can fi fine tune individual sounds like your cymbals. You can adjust the uh, how you know the volume, mute, solo. This is just like a full uh, mixer here. You can adjust the individual volume controls. There's also the overhead rooms and also a parallel bus. Uh, so if you want to squash everything with a compressor, you can do that as well. Um, on top of that, you have send effects, which they have uh, like a delay reverb, and then there's your master. Um, you can actually take all of these tracks if you want to as well too, and individually send them out to your DAW of choice and mix through the DAW using uh, plugins that you have. But I found that the internal stuff that they have is really all that I need. Um, if I really ever wanted to though, the option's there. And you can see you can edit sounds individually. So your, your kick, you can adjust pitch, envelope. Let's do that real quick. And you can a little bit higher and tighter if you want to. Uh, change your response. These are all the individual sounds here. You go into effects. You can uh, adjust the uh, reverb. 
there's different sounds, ambience, room, all. There's the new trigger gate that's option that's there too that I haven't even messed with. Uh, I'll see it's pretty nice though. Um, and then this is what I like is uh, you can actually, if you don't want to program all the MIDI parts yourself, um, I actually like to program my MIDI parts, but occasionally there are uh, certain fills uh, that you want to put in, and that's kind of what I use it for. I'll take a, a small fill because, I mean, I can play drums, very, very basic, but um, sometimes, you know, it's nice to have a little pizzazz there in your track and add, add some fills. Um, these are all the different styles that you have. You can sort about tempo, time signature, and you can turn off the beats here and just have fills. So. And one thing I do is um, I'll actually drag this into my um, DAW and I'll uh, edit certain parts, you know, just take out the first part and only transfer the certain thing. You can also mark, uh, this is a new thing I saw was uh, mark first beat in the host. So I think it's this, you just click this and drag it to wherever you want it. I'm guessing, uh, I'll have to look back at that and see exactly how to do it. Uh, but yeah, you just take it and you click on it and you can drag it over to your DAW. Um, and the way uh, I set it up here is, uh, let me show you my keyboard. So you have your keyboard. Each key has an individual sound. But uh, yeah, I go through and I individually uh, record each each one of the parts, hi hat and ride and all that, and kind of create the drum track that way. And like I said, I use fills um, within uh, uh, addictive drums to sort of spice it up a little bit. Now the key with this is that I talked about this before, but uh, latency is a thing where um, you want to have a sound card, uh, especially if you're using virtual instruments like for drums or for keyboards or anything like that, where when you press the key, it sends MIDI from the key, uh, from the keyboard um, out to the computer, then it recognizes it. And if you go back to uh, this, there's actually a setting here for MIDI mapping. And you'll see like, here's your kick snare and you can adjust this if you wanted to you can actually adjust this for individual uh, drum um, ele electronic drums that are out there and you can um, use that as a preset so like all the rolling drums are in there uh, Yamaha has a whole bunch there's a couple of leases on here you can set it for general MIDI um, but the uh, 82 standard uh, seems to be pretty good because it has everything on here um, laid out pretty well and you can even uh, if you want to you can do the learn function there's a whole bunch of different things like uh, map cc value to stroke type so uh, different things are, are mapped I think it's velocity if I remember right that you can adjust it and a whole bunch of other stuff um, position uh, simple chokes all that kind of stuff um, so you can get really detailed with this um, and I haven't even messed with all that kind of stuff before. But uh, yeah, you can do pretty much anything with this. With latency, uh, what happens is, it, so keyboard again, 
keyboard sends MIDI information out to the computer or plug in or whatever you have. Um, usually it's the DAW that reads it. And then what happens is it basically has to process it through, you know, the processor and everything within the computer, the CPU. And then it has to send that information back out to the outputs of the sound card. And then from the sound card it goes out to the speakers so you can hear it. So if you don't have a fast CPU or a good driver, um, you're going to hear uh, latency, which when you press a key, it doesn't respond or it's, it's a little bit slightly delayed, like usually 10 milliseconds and above. Most people will notice that. Um, I typically try and go five milliseconds and below uh, if possible. Um, between five and 10 is sort of doable, but for me, it seems like five is, is pretty good. And I've noticed with uh, Macintosh computers and iPhones and iPads, if you use the built-in audio, that's right at five milliseconds, so it's perfect. So that's a good, um, that's a good setting to have. Um, when you do that, you're adjusting your buffers, which this is complicated stuff, but um, it took me a long time to figure out, but you go to, audio settings on here. I'm using my Motu Ultralight Mark V and you can see here 128 samples at 2.9 milliseconds. That's fine. But if I adjusted it to a higher thing, let's, let's do that. If I did uh, 1024 on here and then if I go back to the uh, keyboard you might notice like a slight delay from when I'm hitting the key. Which is the sample rate, the audio buffer size. So let me go back and put it to, I like to do 128. You can do 64 and 32 on most Macs and they can handle it, but 128 kind of gives the CPU a little bit of um, room to breathe uh, is what I, how I say it. And 2.9 milliseconds, that's it's awesome. Um, it works great. So, um, you see everything plays in time now. That. So that was always a big thing when I was on Windows is trying to get everything down. You can use um, ASIO drivers uh, that help out um, any of this stuff that comes with windows, like if you plug something in and you have that weird latency, it used to drive me crazy. But, um, yeah, with Macs, it's, uh, pretty, pretty easy with PCs. It can be done. Um, sometimes you just have to adjust settings and, and things like that. And you got to have a strong enough CPU so it doesn't glitch out. You hear pops and clicks if you have problems with that. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, it's kind of a overview about how a lot of this stuff works, but yeah, this is how I, how I do drums, how I handle it. And, um, I, I really like the software. It's pretty awesome that that uh, company will go out and they'll provide a free update to 2.5, um, from a 10 year old software that's out there that I've always thought, like I said, it sounds really, really good. And it's, it's what I've been using. And I took a long time to, to look through all the different um, options that were out there. And there's some that are more expensive. Um, there's a lot of those you have all these crazy add-ons and upgrades and stuff like that. You gotta pay for a ton of money. So it's good to see a uh, software company actually um, supporting the users that are, are dedicated, you know, that, that um, you know, in, enjoy uh, what they have out there. So yeah, um, if anyone has questions, uh, leave a question in the comments and uh, yeah, let me know uh, what you use, what you prefer. Um, and if there's any, like I said, other questions of things that I didn't get to about how things are done. Um, yeah, let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can answer it. But yeah, yeah. Hope everyone uh, has, a, has a great day today and uh, hope, uh, hope you're having a good week. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. See ya.